Welcome back, everybody. This is The Cube, SiliconANGLE's premier video production. Uh, my name is Jeff Kelly with Wikibon.org. We're here, of course, at .com 2012, Splunk's annual user conference in Las Vegas. We're at the Cosmopolitan Hotel. Uh, had, had on some great guests today, and we've got a whole second half of the day for you. Lunch just finished up, and then we've got a whole lineup of great guests for you. I'm joined here by my co-host, Jeff Frick from SiliconANGLE. Thank you, Jeff. Yes, we're all recharged. We had a great lunch. Uh, thank you for the Cosmopolitan Hotel here in lovely Las Vegas, where we're having the show. We are joined now by Lionel Hartman from Splunk. He is a VP in charge of customers and documentation. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Welcome to theCUBE. So how has the show been going so far for you? Oh, I like it. No, it's very exciting. Um, great time uh, looking at customer presentation, getting a chance to uh, mingle and talk to the different customers and partners. It's a very exciting moment. Yeah, it, it is really fun to hear. And I think we talked a little bit off camera before we started about mm -hmm. some of the innovative ways that people are using Mm -hmm. are using this technology. I wonder if you want to expand on that uh, a little bit. We're sure, about. so uh, this morning uh, I was uh, listening to a presentation from a Harris uh, group, and they were showing how they were leveraging Splunk to uh, able to analyze uh, radar da data and track plane where the location of the plane and pinpoint that onto a Google map. So when you're flying, if you have Wi-Fi in a plane, you can see where you are compared to the other plane. So it's quite interesting. Yeah. But the, the, the big test, right, the big test always is, you know, do you eat your own dog food? And uh, Tom told us before you came on that you've got a pretty interesting uh, story to tell about you guys actually do eat yeah. your own dog food. Tell Correct. Tell us a little bit about that. Correct. So um, I'm running the support organization for the last five years here at Splunk. And um, since we started, Splunk is an engine for machine data. We're able to log, hit any type of data. So to troubleshoot Splunk, we need to use a product our own product, and we decided to use Splunk to do that. So we started this initiative about um, two years ago, where we uh, created with the, the entire support organization and documentation team a global project to establish a system where our customer we provide them, uh, our customer provide us their log files, and we're going to put that into our application, and uh, through this application, get a, a faster analysis. So just, that was for for the origin of the of the system, and we call this system Splunk on Splunk. And you, what we have done with this effort is um, a project that I'm very proud of. Interesting, we've actually, uh, we use a different term sometimes on theCUBE. We had uh, at Sapphire a couple years ago, uh, SAP uh, CIO Oliver Boosman called it uh, drinking your own champagne. So we, oh. also, yeah. we also use that. That's not, I think I like that one a little bit. You like that one better? I like well, that one. We'll it's to uh, popularize that one to, to a broader audience. <laughs> yeah. um, so dig in a little bit more into some of the details about really how you guys are using your own technology to, to really support customers, to support mm -hmm. your internal operations. Mm -hmm. um, give us some of the real the core use cases you guys are, are finding for Splunk oh. in Splunk. On yeah, Splunk, definitely. So for, uh, for, for customer support, my, my, my goal, my mandate is to be the voice of the customer. And I'm here at Splunk to ensure the customer success. So what we decided with this application, we decided to take the the, the core support team, the core documentation team, make them work together and try to analyze what type of issues the customer are reporting to us. Mm -hmm. And using our own tool to troubleshoot those issues in a faster way. So just to give you some perspective on that, mm -hmm. using Splunk on Splunk internally, we have been able to reduce the time to resolution from two hours to 20 minutes. Because what happened before is customer give us the state of log file from their Splunk environment, we need to load it into an instance that we have in-house, take some time to set it up, a couple of hours. And the engineers at the time were doing their own search, you know, troubleshooting step on their own. That's not scaling. So we decided to centralize this system of investigation into one global application, Splunk on Splunk. And the way we did that is having all the engineers contributed to their tips and tricks. How did they use to troubleshoot some certain some type of issues, what uh, graph to look at, and everything like that. So we started a project for 18 months ago. Uh, we, we, we work with the, the engineers trying to, to use some simple use case. Uh, like for example, uh, when you have some searches, we are taking too, too long to be run. Now, instead of trying to do long complex investigation, we just need to look at one graph and it show overlapping searches uh, and help us narrow down where the problem is. So, do a little background before you came on and looked up at your LinkedIn page, and you've been in support for a really long time. Correct. Um, long before you were at Splunk. And so, really, I think what's interesting from, from, your, uh, 
from your career mm -hmm. perspective, from being in support for such a long time, you know, yep. how, how is this enabling you to do stuff either that you couldn't do before or is just the speed of which you can execute so much better? And then are you able to then take that out to the customer by offering better SLAs or charging um, more for a premium service that you couldn't really effectively deliver before? I mean, it's got to be pretty interesting from a historical yeah. perspective. No, from a, yeah, it's a very good point. So from a new historical perspective, uh, yes, I spent all my career in support doing from all the different jobs there. And with Splunk, it's the first time where I'm able to arrive to provide um, effectiveness in the troubleshooting. So in other words, what I like as vice president of support right now is the fact that I can reduce the time to troubleshooting for the customer, so that means when we start to be effective into narrowing down the problem. And I'm also able to reduce the time to ramp up the new support engineer within the team. Because we have uh, into this application a lot of different dashboards, and we have one of the dashboards, which is my favorite one, which is a red, yellow, green light, where we have known issues. So for example, if we have bugs into the product and we know about, just using Splunk on Splunk, a Splunk administrator in their instance will be able to, 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 to target those known issues. And when you see a red button, you know, you just click on it, you say, ah, the, here there is a problem. So the ramp up time from the engineer to come up to speed is much shorter. Um, from a, a productivity standpoint as well, what's something which is very beneficial and I was not able to do before, is we are able to collaborate not only internally, but as well externally with the rest of the organization. Because if we find an issue with Splunk on Splunk and try to troubleshoot it, and we need to get help from engineering or product management, that means level three or level four of support. When we go talk to the engineering team, they find a new, a new way to troubleshoot that. We incorporate, incorporate their feedback into the, the application. We make a new revision of it, post it on Splunk Base, and it's available for the customer. So that means a ever evolving learning product. So it's more productivity gain in terms of time to troubleshooting, productivity gain in terms of uh, ramping up the, the engineer, but as well productivity gain in terms of collaboration, because we're able to provide for our customer, you know, the, the result of the brightest of the, of the team member across the company. Right. Now, for your second aspect of your question uh, regarding um, going out to other customers, yes, that's, that's the idea behind it. Right now, the, we wanted to prove for the last two years that it's working for us and is effective for us, and we're, we are there now, and we're exploring with other support organization, if they will be interested to do that. A targeted uh, support organization will be organization where there are multiple products. Okay. You know, multiple products, multiple set of log files. Uh, everybody specialized in one specific product. With that, you can put everything into Splunk, live, doing some customization within the application itself, but you have the framework mm -hmm. to kind of gather those data and enable those organizations as well. To, to be more effective and more productive. Wow. So that's great. something we're looking into. Great story, and then again, yep. you can Splunk on Splunk because you can write your own app that sits on top of it for your exactly. group as well. Yes, and right now the uh, Splunk on Splunk application is free on Splunk base. Just look for SOS or Splunk on Splunk. We have 4,000 download. Customers are really uh, happy about it. And uh, one last uh, comment about the app is part of the development, we, in we integrated feedback for some of our customers. So, we were able to, to have, uh, and you will see that in a credit page of the app, different customers we contributed to the app by providing us you know, uh, suggestions, enhancement requests, and using them in their environment. And really what matters to me is real genuine feedback. Right. Does it work for you or not? And the answer was yes, it's working for them. Right. Right. Uh, so I wonder uh, if you could talk a little bit about <coughs> your history at Splunk. You've been about five years uh, yes. overseeing mm -hmm. support. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm interested to hear about kind of uh, how has support, the support issues that you're hearing from customers changed over those five years? Um, you know, we've gone through this, you know, over the last couple of years, the term big data mm -hmm. has kind of, kind of come of age and people are really, uh, you know, there's a lot of hype around it, but there's obviously some substance as well, a lot mm -hmm. of substance. But how has that maybe impacted some of the customers you're, you're gaining and then therefore the support? requests you're getting, mm -hmm. how has the support uh, requests you get kind of trended over the last five years? So um, from a trend in terms of volume, we are just matching the growth of our customer. So we get more cases because we're onboarding more customer. And uh, what we've seen right now is, uh, for us it's not so much related to big data, it's much related to the use case. Mm -hmm. So here we, we're starting to see use case which are more, more specific, more advanced, so it, it requires for the team to understand more than just the product. So that's why for the, the support engineering team as well as for the, the technical writer, they need to kind of think behind 
just the case itself, behind the, just the issue at hand, but what is the customer trying to do with the application? And so what has changed for the organization is we have been able to get the engineers trained on trying to understand. You know, you're dealing with a security company, mm -hmm. you need to have kind of a, an understanding what are the security requirements. You deal with a, a telecom company, they have other set of requirements. So you need to understand for both aspects what is critical for them. Mm -hmm. And that's what has been part of the evolution of the support engineer. It's from a just pure IT management uh, to the data center or monitoring PS stack or, uh, or, or other, you know, data center uh, attribute, now you need to understand more the business reason. Like when you have a customer in telecommunication using the application for their frontline customer services organization and they have a problem there, you need to understand why it's important, what the criticality aspect of the, of the issues. And we are doing that more and more and evolving with the customer as we're learning. So, Go ahead. So yes. your staff needs to really have some domain expertise as well exactly. as these technical expertise. Yes. So how do you organize your staff? Do you have uh, specific um, staff members who are focused on security or focused on a particular use case, or mm -hmm. is that kind of did you kind of train uh, you know across your staff to to, to, be, to understand to, uh, to a certain degree as much as possible the mm -hmm. different use cases? So what we do right now, we uh, we we are implementing a specialization, mm -hmm. where we have a specialization of the product matching the the rest of the organization. So the goal with the specialization is to establish subject matter expertise, SME, where you, you're going to be specialized on the core Splunk, you're going to be specialized on the content, that means the application, you're going to specialize on the development of Splunk, or you're going to be specialized in um, account focus. What I mean by account focus is when you have dedicated resources attached to one specific account. That's the part where the engineer attached to their account need to learn more about what their account is doing. So that's part of our premium offering. But at the same time, we, we, we try to, to have this specialization in terms of domain expertise. So the way to, to, to address the situation is during the last five years, we hired more and more people with domain expertise. We, when, uh, we hired people with security background, for example, you know, so, uh, uh, engineers with a developer support background. It's not only limited to IT people that we were uh, at first, people knowing just about support, how to do support now, it's like, you can come to Splunk and make a difference because you have a, a specific background. You know AIX, you, 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 you're an expert in networking. We have, we have room for you guys. Well, it sounds like your, your challenge is going to continue to grow because as we've had a number of people at theCUBE, you know, yeah. the, 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 the range and kind of creative um, approach to using this tool to solve new problems yeah. seems to be almost infinite. And, yeah. You know, we heard the elevator story in the keynote, and uh, I thought you were going to tell the one about the thermostat. So uh, oh. you'll have a broad range of these uh, yes. experts. Oh yeah, definitely. No, we have a, a, a vast variety of, uh, of uh, use cases, and they're all as interesting as, uh, as uh, I really like it. For me, I really like it, and I don't see that much as a challenge, but as an opportunity, because really, for the first time, I'm able to to look at it from a from a customer success standpoint. Like you, you have a, you have an application to monitor in your your house thermostat. You know it's mission critical for your business. That's a use case that we need to address. So here is that we work with you, we partner with you, and uh, where, where the team is very successful in terms of customer satisfaction result is when we are able to partner with our customer. So that means have this kind of a trust relationship established where we can open up to our customer what's going on tell them when something goes wrong, tell them when something is right, and work with them to kind of uh, extend for them the, 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 the usage of the product. Like, you know, we customer will come for the break and fix for us, and we said, oh yes, we address the performance on your search. But you know, you do the search this way, you can do a, another dashboard this way, and we just kind of give them some, some information. Because our model is to have what I call a social support platform. We have integrated with support, so the Splunk on Splunk app, but we have also the documentation on the media wiki platform. We have also Splunk Answers, which is our Q&A system, which is fully integrated. We have the IRC, the, the chat, and all those systems are here where to push technical knowledge, technical enablement information for our user across the world. So it's more like uh, a way to, as much as I know, I will put it on, a, on the internet for our user to be able to self-serve themselves but at the same time to kind of uh, contribute to this uh, overall ecosystem. And um, the, the social support model that we have in place has been 
has been great for us. Plan Cancer is awesome. You know, a lot of traffic, a lot of activity. The IRC people are getting real in-depth technical information. The documentation is one of the number one channel of uh, input to our website. Uh, and for the rest of the, the team, we're able to specialize them in kind of uh, expertise, domain of expertise, security, uh, IT infrastructure, operation, monitoring, business intelligence now, or whatever we need and whatever will come. The model is, is ready to scale. Right. We have the strong foundation to, to scale to the next right. level. You're so enthusiastic. I've been, I've been involved in a little bit of support, not a, not a career worth. And, and usually support is not the happiest place to be. It's, oh. There's a lot of break fix and you get unhappy customers, but it, it sounds like you're, you're really using the tools well yes. to, to turn support into an asset, both to grow mm -hmm. the knowledge base in the company, to leverage the community that's coming in through various mm -hmm. methods, um, yes. and to help customers implement their, exactly. their, uh, their solutions better. So it sounds really exciting. Oh yeah, no. Just, I'm, I'm so excited to, I've, I've drank the Kool-Aid for five years now, but I'm champagne, still loving the champagne, the, champagne. the champagne. The champagne, yeah. <laughs> so I, 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 really like the, I really like the product, I really like the company, and uh, with what we have with Splunk on Splunk, it's kind of uh, the, the way to, what our philosophy is all about, is we have internally a system that we use to do the troubleshooting, but instead of keeping that for ourselves when the customer calls us, we decided to take the same product exact same features and put it on Splunk base for our customer. So that means if you're a Splunk admin, you just need to download Splunk on Splunk and you will have the same view that all the super engineers in my team have. And when you call and you have a problem, either you look at it and you have some clarification, we show you step by step how to troubleshoot it. So that means it's like more teaching you how to fish instead of providing you an answer when you call. We right. don't, we, we want you to be enabled to use the product to, to its fullest capacity. Well, you stole my line. I was going to say, I think, I think as we are in a search of, of better titles for some of the people that haven't got their title, it's really, I think for Lionel Hartman, it's, it should be VP of Customer Enablement because it's not break fix. It's, it's not just documentation. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope you're giving out lots of copies of the book. Yeah. But it is really customer enablement. So thank yeah. you very much like for coming it. on theCUBE. It's, uh, it's, it's been very insightful to hear. Mm -hmm. And again, eating your own dog food or drinking the, yep. the champagne yep. is, a, is a really good validation um, for the customer, or I mean for the company, for the product that you're selling and the service you're providing. So yep. another great segment here on theCUBE. Again, we're at Splunk's Conf 2012, the Cosmopolitan Hotel. We're back to back all day long. I think if you've been with us so far, that's terrific, you've enjoyed it. You want to join the conversation, jump on Twitter. It's a hashtag day to journey. We look forward to seeing you there. Thanks again, Lionel. We'll be right back with our next guest. See you in a Thank minute. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff.